Hey, welcome back everyone for the latest edition of The Chat. I'm Sean Evans with the Chatham County Public Information Office. Thank you so much for joining us today. With me, I have a very special guest and you hold uh, several very important titles. So I'm gonna look down here really quick to make sure I get these right. You are Dr. Chris Rustin, Public Health Administrator for the Chatham County Health Department, as well as the Deputy Commissioner for the Georgia Department of Public Health. That's correct. Welcome in, sir. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for taking time yeah. to talk with us yeah, today. Thank you for having me. Well, for those who may not know you, tell <coughs> us a little bit about yourself, uh, because we know sure. coming back here to coastal Georgia, the coastal empire was really important for you, right? Well, it was absolutely important. I'm from this area. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, uh, I guess, about 50 miles from here um, in a small community. I grew up on a farm, and uh, public health, Working in the field of public health was never in my mind, I guess, when I was in high school and, and went off to college. Uh, I planned to go to medical school and, and uh, you know, things change. I, 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 and when I was in college, I decided to uh, take a break from school for a little while and actually worked at Chatham County Mosquito Control um, as one of their long-term interns. And um, uh, that was probably the first time I got a feel for public health from a different side of public health. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was around the time that West Nile was starting to become a thing. Uh, we really didn't know a lot about it, but we knew that there was some concerns. Um, and uh, from that, uh, working there in that position uh, as that seasonal intern mm -hmm. um, led to a first job at a health department um, in my hometown. And, um, uh, I, you know, again, when I started the position, I thought, yeah, I'll be here a couple of years. And, um, probably still go to medical school or, or move on and uh, ended up really loving the work. Um, you know, their medicine is really focused on treating an individual. Mm -hmm. Public health is focused on treating population. So it's a much broader scope right. um, of, and we're trying to prevent things upstream um, before they happen. Mm -hmm. um, but that little stint at that small rural health department uh, led me to eventually transfer to Effingham County Health Department mm -hmm. um, in the early uh, early 2000s um, and I uh, worked uh, in environmental health in that uh, very fast growing county yeah. um, and uh, was always associated with the Chatham County Health Department because during that time we were a small public health district we were only two counties at that time it was oh, wow. Chatham and Effingham was a public health district as they're the divided in the state right. um, and uh, eventually decided I wanted to come back to Savannah and, uh, and, and I had went to college here when Armstrong was Armstrong mm -hmm. before Georgia Southern merged. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we knew, this, knew the area, loved the area, and uh, took over as the deputy environmental health manager for the Chatham County Health Department and eventually was promoted to the manager um, and loved the time that I was here. It was early 2000s. Um, there was a lot of activity happening. Um, and, you know, my career kind of took me uh, to Atlanta after that. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I transferred in uh, mid-2000s to the headquarters at the Department of Public Health and um, have been in a variety of positions there. I was the environmental health director for the state. Um, I served as uh, the health protection director, which uh, at the Department of Public Health is a division that oversees multiple health protection related programs. Um, and I was in that role for, for a number of years, um, uh, well over a decade. Um, and then the pandemic started, um, which, you know, I think everybody has experienced that in some yeah. form or fashion. It was a one, hopefully a once in a lifetime uh, event that we had to uh, respond to. Um, but I've always kind of had it in the back of my mind that I'd like to return home one day. Um, and I consider this, you know, the coastal empire of this region my home. Um, and had the opportunity, uh, the, the, the longtime uh, health department director, uh, Dr. McCall, had, re had retired. Mm -hmm. And um, just by happenstance, I was talking to the uh, medical director here on the coast, and uh, he asked me to interview. He said, you know, you should consider interviewing for the position, and, okay. and, and here I am. Um, <laughs> I interviewed and uh, was selected for the position and, and officially started um, in 2021, actually. I was gonna say, yeah. I was trying to remember when you came in. Yeah, it was 2021. Talking. And so, the, you know, the pandemic was still raging pretty hard at that time. Sure. Um, and that was right before we started getting vaccines uh, to, to, to give people for COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and there was still a lot going on at, at the, in Atlanta at the Department of Public Health. And so I was asked to consider um, helping out in Atlanta, coordinating the, uh, the COVID response. And so, um, I started traveling to Atlanta, st was sort of splitting my time between 
uh, the health department here and in Atlanta, um, mm. helping out with the response, and kind of been doing that for for a while now. Um, but uh, you know, it's I love being here, and I love the role and and the people in the community and the staff that I work with. I think we have a really uh, great health department, and we're now the Coastal Health District. We merged um, no, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. We merged from being a two-county Chatham Effingham Public Health District to the right. Coastal Health District, eight, right. which is eight counties. Yeah, that we yeah. go, we our district boundaries go from uh, Effingham County to Camden County, all the way to Florida. Right. Um, and so our district covers all of the coastal counties, and we're one of 18 public health districts. Uh, in the state of Georgia. Okay. Well, it, again, all of that high-level knowledge, your experience in Atlanta, no doubt, served you very well for I those think so. first couple yeah. of months coming here, yeah, especially absolutely. still in the midst of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well, I do want to ask Dr. Austin, now that the pandemic, or at least mm -hmm. the severe effects, appear to be mm -hmm. in the rear view mirror a little bit more, <clears throat> uh, what did we learn from a health district perspective in managing COVID as we prepared for uh, perhaps a future similar sure. event? Well, one thing that uh, I think we learned is that you can't undervalue partnerships. Um, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was so much uncertainty. Um, you know, the coronavirus was called a novel virus, which means a new virus or a new variant of a, of, of a virus. And we didn't know a lot about it. Um, we were, we had plans to respond to pandemics. We had, you know, exercise plans on how to stand up drive through testing site. We didn't consider it at that time we weren't going to be testing. Mm -hmm. You know, our plan revolved around responding actually to a bioterrorism event mm -hmm. um, where we could hand out pharmaceuticals to people. But the the model was the same. You know, you people drive through a site, they're either handed a drug or, or in, in this case, they were tested for COVID or given a vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had tested that, but we had never tested it in the volume that it happened, yeah. um, you know, and as quickly as it happened. Um, in the beginning of, of the pandemic, there was no, not a lot of supplies. There wasn't a lot of testing supplies. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't, uh, vaccines weren't available for a full year um, mm -hmm. before we could even, even think about that. Right. Um, and public health in the beginning was almost the only game in town. We, we had a lot of the supplies because we had access to the federal supplies that were being sent to states mm -hmm. for the health departments. Mm -hmm. And so it became very apparent that either we, we couldn't do this in a vacuum, that we had to seek out partnerships um, because while we are the largest health department in the Coastal Health District, and actually Chatham County Health Department is the fifth largest health department in the state of Georgia, okay. there was no way we could test a population of 300,000 people if they wanted it. Um, and so we immediately started uh, reaching out and, and you know, thankfully this county um, has done a wonderful job. Uh, SEMA has done a great job of bringing partners together under um, the public health emergency support functions. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of partners with the hospitals, with the private you know, industry. Um, and we immediately reached out to SEMA. We reached out to our partners and said, look, we're going to need help with this. We're going to need help with uh, standing up testing sites. We're going to need help with you know, um, searching for uh, PPE for our staff. Um, and, and you know, you'd never really realize how valuable partnerships are until you need them. Yeah. Um, and so the one thing that I think we learned more than anything is that y y during the off time when you're not responding to an event, mm -hmm. you're building these partnerships and sometimes you think this is mundane work, we're going to meetings, but it, it really did come to fruition. Um, I, 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 without missing a partner, I, I hate to think individual partnerships, but I, but I can't say enough about uh, the county, the emergency management agency here under Dennis Jones, um, you know, we worked very closely with uh, all the hospitals um, in, in various partnerships. We worked closely with the business community. Um, sure. And, you know, it, 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 that to me is the, the biggest takeaway. Um, and, and I think one thing that we learned from this whole pandemic response mm -hmm. was that, you know, we, we didn't really realize as a sort of a government agency how important the business community was to public health. Absolutely. Um, but the pandemic impacted the businesses mm -hmm. and they were asking us like, you know, can my people come back to work? You know, it was hurting their bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so being able to work with them, to educate them, um, and, and they, you know, with the Chamber of Commerce, all these organizations was able to get us an audience that we were able to hopefully, you know, it wasn't perfect. You know, there was a, a lot of 
you know, the, the, the guidance would be provided and then it would change. And so sure. we would have to change. And, yeah. you know, there's a lot of frustration around that. But um, I think the partnerships is probably the biggest takeaway and um, recognizing that if we ever have to respond to another event, whether it be a, a public health event or a hurricane or whatever, that those partnerships are critical. And I'm glad that I'm glad that Chatham County has done such a great job of fostering the, those relationships in the off time yeah. because it really uh, came it really helped us when we needed them. As they say, you play like you practice. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Uh, how did you manage the varying information throughout the pandemic uh, from a public health perspective and yeah. in, in getting the most up-to-date and accurate messaging to the public? I know you said just mm -hmm. then that it changed, the guidance yeah, it did. changed yeah. almost on a dime yes. uh, on yes. some occasions, right? It, it That was challenging, you know, as a public health scientist, you know, we were consuming so much information. Um, we got a lot of our information from CDC. We got uh, information from um, the various federal um, health organizations. Mm -hmm. But trying, you know, communicating that to the public it can be challenging. Um, you know, epidemi nobody knew what epidemiology was until the pandemic. Now everybody knows what an epidemiologist mm -hmm. is. Um, it's hard to spell that word sometimes. <laughs> um, but the way that we tried to manage it was by developing simple dashboards that we would put on our websites, things that the public could read and very quickly understand what the data meant. Um, what we wanted to be able to, to, to at least convey is, you know, what is our actual, you know, rate of disease in the county, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, how many, what's the percent of folks who are, are positive for COVID? Um, you know, we wanted to provide death certificates, uh, <laughs> death data to the, to sure. the, to the county sure. um, so they would know just how bad it was here. Um, and hopefully by providing some of that information, it would help change behavior. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether it was, you know, wearing a mask or not wearing a mask or, you know, avoiding a crowd or, or what, just, you know, the one thing that, you know, some of the, the basic public health messaging didn't change, you know, it's always right. important to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. It's always important not to sneeze on somebody or cough <laughs> on somebody. Right. You know, right. it, it, we, we highlighted that message during the pandemic because it became even more important. Mm -hmm. But the information did change drastically. Um, and I think that, that it, it's hard for everyone to understand sometimes that when you're dealing with a new disease, that's normal. You're go it's going to change. As, as the federal scientists, the, 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 the healthcare community is learning about diseases, right. you're, you're, it's almost like we're watching um, uh, something play out in real time that normally you would have a lot like diseases sometimes are studied in a laboratory mm -hmm. and you know you have years of research and years of data to make you know medical recommendations right. we didn't have that time we were literally watching it and as it unfolded mm -hmm. um, and, you know in the beginning we didn't know that it was spread airborne you know there was the suspicion that it was sure but in the very beginning no one really knew how it was spread if you may remember in the beginning the, the primary message was is wash your hands don't touch surfaces well we learned that right. most people don't get exposed from surfaces they get exposed from the airborne droplets i don't know how um, many times i wipe down groceries yeah and we you know if you think about that in the beginning that was <laughs> yeah, the thing everybody yeah. wiped everything down but yeah. really and truly it was the coughing the airborne mm -hmm. Um, and, and being, in, being in a crowded room, you know, and, and we had to learn that. And, and that changed the whole guidance, you know. One minute it was wear, uh, you know, a cloth mask, and then we, we found out that really doesn't work. Then it was surgical mask, and then it was N95s. And, mm -hmm. and you couldn't get a lot of that, those items at one point, you know, it was no. a run on supplies. Um, and so, you know, I guess that's another takeaway, I think, for public health and, and probably government in general is that, you know, we've got to do a a, a better job of, of conveying information as it changes um, and being honest about it. I think, you know, I've, I've, my mantra has always been try to be as honest as possible about any, any data mm -hmm. that, that we share. If we don't know, we, we should say we don't know, but we'll we try to get back to you or, or at least research that. Sure. Um, there was so much data coming in, organizing it in mm -hmm. these dashboards helped us mm -hmm. at least process the information and, and, and share that information to the public. Um, and so that was, you know, a long way of saying that, I, of, you know, I've, I've been in public health now for um, over 23 years and I've never responded to an event where the amount of data that was coming in and the public's demand to know mm -hmm. about something was so strong 
um, that, you know, we, one thing we learned is that we've got to have very clear, very simple messages mm -hmm. um, and either in addition to sharing it on the website, we've also got to get in front of the camera. We've got to talk because not everybody to this day uses computers and goes on the internet. I mean, there, yep. there has to be a, a variety of ways of getting the message out. I do remember the weekly updates, and yes. there would be those in front of our various uh, governing bodies right, here in right, the county, too, right. and how important those right. were for the elected leaders also to share that message with their mm -hmm. constituents. Uh, Dr. Rustin, the district encompasses, again, as we mm -hmm. spoke about, eight counties from Chatham to McIntosh County. What are some of the initiatives that the district is focusing on now from the northern end all the way sure, to the southern sure. end? Well, you know, every county, the, the beauty of public health is every county is a little different. Um, the needs are different in every community. Um, it, it, it may vary. You know, a rural community may, may decide that these are the initiatives we want to focus on. And so I'm just going to mention kind of a few overarching ones that I think um, that all of our health departments are probably focused on. And one of them is women's health. You know, we want to make sure that um, we're providing adequate services for women. Um, you know, Georgia has a maternal mortality concern. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the ways that we're trying to, to reduce that is by ensuring that we're offering uh, good services to women that need those services. Um, and so that is one of the initiatives, you know, having good women's health services available um, in all of our health department sites throughout mm -hmm. throughout the, the, the district and the state, for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing that I think is important is community outreach. Um, that became critically important during, during the pandemic response, but Absolutely. continuing that outside of the pandemic, um, you know, not everyone can come to a physical building. Right. And one of the things that, that we learned is bringing public health services to the community, whether it's, you know, planning an event at a church or, or, or actually showing up at Forsyth Park mm -hmm. during um, during the farmer's market, which we did and, and, and actually got a lot of, uh, was able to provide a lot of services. Um, you know, w we, we want to be able to provide that more throughout our district. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we were able to get some funding um, from the pandemic response to, to hire staff that, that are, are providing these community services, these kind of community outreach workers, mm -hmm. and their district staff that work in multiple counties. And they're able, you know, we've held several events where we've offered, you know, blood pressure checks and glucose mm -hmm. screenings um, and things of that sort. And so I know that there is an effort across the district to be able to ensure that we're, we're being very community driven. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that to me is sort of the essence of public health, being part of the community um, and providing those services that are needed yeah. um, in the community. So, so definitely community outreach, women's health. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think across the district and across the state for that matter is improving WIC services, the women's, infants, and children's services. Mm -hmm. um, many, many women and children um, receive these these services where they're provided, um, you know, well, it used to be paper vouchers, and that's the one thing that I, I, that, I, that, that I want to yes. yeah. uh, clarify that, you know, we issued paper vouchers for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, paper vouchers are, are uh, you know, they, they, they take a long time when you're in line, you're buying, you know, it allows, you know, women to buy milk, cheese, eggs, things that, nutri nutritious items, cereal for their, for their children. Mm -hmm. um, but we have switched um, to uh, a debit card. Um, mm -hmm. So the state uh, finally switched the system over. Um, and now it's a much simpler system. Um, your vouchers are, you're issued a debit card. Um, you, you, you scan it just like you do uh, any type of, of bank card or credit card. Um, it'll give you the balance of, of how much you have on there on your receipt. Um, and that has really simplified the process. Um, and, you know, I, I do think, I think a lot of women may not be aware of that. Because one of the negative, negativity, negative um, uh, there was feedback is that sort of stigma well, of yeah. having these paper vouchers yeah, yeah. Um, and now that's gone away. Um, we, we've talked to clients that are using the card and they love it. Um, and so I want people to, you know, that, to know that it, you know, they can go to our website, they can look up the qualifications sure. for WIC, um, but if they, they feel like they qualify to please reach out to the health department. Um, yeah. We're happy to enroll them um, and get them started in that and it is a much simpler process. And I know across the state, across the district, um, we've been highlighting our WIC services, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and trying to encourage more women um, with children to uh, to apply for those services. Is the participation where you want it right now? No, and we need to improve it. Um, yeah. The participation has gone up and down. Um, it, it, 
it has gone down actually since sort of the major pandemic response yeah. has, has ended. Um, and we're, we're not sure why, uh, you know, we're, we, we suspect some of that has to do with some of the visits had went to all virtual during the pandemic okay. and that did make it more convenient. But in addition to WIC services, part of the services is our nurses assess the child. Mm -hmm. They assess uh, the mother or caregiver. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't really get that from a virtual visit. Um, right. You really need, to, you know, we need to be able to weigh the child mm -hmm. um, and do that assessment to make sure that they're they're actually gaining weight and they're mm -hmm. they're getting the nutrition they need. We have nutritionists at the health department that sit down with the family and kind of go through the nutritional needs of, of the family, mm -hmm. um, and that's very difficult to do on a phone call. Yeah. Um, and so we are uh, requiring, you know, families to come back in. Um, to, to basically recertify their benefits. And I do think that that's caused some of the decline. Um, and, but but we're, we're trying to make it as simplified as possible. We want to get families in and out as quickly as possible in the health department. And that's our goal is to be efficient, mm -hmm. um, to, but, but to be thorough because it's, it is an important program. Absolutely. Uh, how does your public health focus and initiatives differ mm -hmm. or does it uh, county to county. I know you're going to mm -hmm. address certain needs mm -hmm. from a rural county versus, mm -hmm. say, Chatham, right? I mean, it, it, yeah. it's not cookie cutter. It's not, but I do want to mention, you know, there is a sort of a core list of services that every health department offers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a larger county health department typically will have more resources, more staff, and are able to offer, you know, more services. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the core services, you know, we're a prevention-based organization. Um, our primary goal is to offer services that prevent things. Mm -hmm. And so every health department is going to offer immunizations, vaccinations, uh, child vaccinations, as well as a variety of adult vaccinations. I think that's sort of the, the hallmark yeah. of, of a public health department. And many children have, are required. Well, all children are required to get certain vaccinations to go to school. Sure. Um, and so we're very busy. You know, school ends this time of year, mm -hmm. but we're still busy because a lot of parents are getting their kids their vaccinations for the next school year. Uh -huh. um, and so every health department in the state, mm -hmm. in the, but more importantly in the Coastal Health District, are offering vaccinations, immunization services. Mm -hmm. Every health department is offering women's health services. You know, this includes family planning. Mm -hmm. We can offer pregnancy testing. Um, we have breastfeeding support services that we can offer. Um, that's going to be offered uh, throughout our co the Coastal Health District. Um, we offer um, STD services, sexually transmitted disease services. Mm -hmm. um, those are prevention-based services um, that we offer to the public. Mm -hmm. We offer HIV services. We have walk-in testing, um, as well as we can provide free self-test kits um, if needed. Um, one thing, you know, tuberculosis is that sort of a, one of those old historical diseases that, yeah. that you read about in history and in you know in places like that. But we people still get TB. They still get tuberculosis, and you know, and and so um, when people are exposed, you know, it's a very infectious, highly infectious disease. Oh, yeah. Um, and we have a, a, a whole unit that's devoted to TB, TB services. Um, and we can, you know, we can provide services, we can offer chest x-rays, mm -hmm. um, we can provide treatment to people who have TB, um, and we also investigate um, uh, any suspected exposure of TB. So for example, if, if someone um, has TB and, and they don't know it, but they get diagnosed, mm -hmm. we do a, a, a contact investigation. Um, to try to figure out who they've exposed so we can reach out to them and, and offer them, you know, any services or support. Right. Um, and so, the, so these are all things that are offered, you know, throughout our health department. Um, we offer children's health services, um, uh, whether that's um, what we call Children's First, where that, you know, sort of every child is assessed and then we can put them in Children's First to determine what other special uh, services they may need. Um, we have uh, what's called Babies Can't Wait, which is a program that we offer to babies up to a certain uh, age. Um, we have uh, what we call our uh, ears, eyes, and dental program, EEDs is what most people call them. Mm -hmm. um, that is required before you can go into kindergarten, an EED. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, we actually are offering uh, two free EED days. We do that every summer before, um, uh, before school starts, so mm -hmm. they'll be offered in uh, July. Those are extremely popular. Um, it's first come, first serve. Uh, no appointments are required, and the line starts before 8 o'clock, usually out the door. Wow. Um, but we get them in, we get them out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do an assessment of their vision, assessment of their hearing, and they have a dental assessment done. Um, and so that's the other thing that we provide at Chatham County that's not offered 
probably in many of the other health departments is we have a dental office in our health department. Um, it, 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 it is it okay. is pediatric dental. We, we only offer dental services for children mm -hmm. um, and, and it's primarily kids who are on Medicaid and so low income kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a very busy office. Um, our dentist, uh, you know, schedules in the, throughout the week, um, and uh, we do a lot of. They offer sealants, uh, cavity uh, repair, um, and cleanings, things of that sort. And yeah. so they're very busy. Um, and you won't probably typically see that in a more smaller uh, rural health department. Yeah. Um, the other, just to to mention a few other sort of core services, mm -hmm. is our breast and cervical cancer program. Um, this is offered to women who essentially they don't have insurance and they don't have uh, the income to be able to, to, to um, treat uh, or even have uh, a mammogram done. Um, and so women can, 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 can apply for this service. If they qualify, we can offer them um, uh, services that can provide um, uh, breast exams as well as treatment mm -hmm. um, through that program. Mm -hmm. I mentioned WIC earlier. Right. Um, E-WIC, again, I can't reiterate that, that we, we, we don't issue paper vouchers anymore. Mm -hmm. I think that's important for people to know that, that, are, that are, may be interested in that program. Right. And then the non-clinical program, I always get excited when I talk about this one, mm -hmm. is our environmental health services. Um, you know, a lot of... Your, your Bally WIC. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the, where I started my career. Yeah. Um, but environmental health is the, the inspectors, uh, the health inspectors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so every... If you've eaten it at any restaurant, if you've swam in any public pool, mm -hmm. if you've stayed in a hotel, um, if, if you live in a rural area and have to have a septic tank system, mm -hmm. um, environmental health has touched your life at some point. We inspect hotels, pools, mm -hmm. uh, we inspect all restaurants. There's over, I think last time I checked, there's a little over 1,700 food service facilities in, in Chatham, Chatham County. Wow. Um, and it's a very busy program. And that covers yeah. everything from private businesses to schools. It does. It does, yeah. yeah. So. Schools, private businesses, uh, prisons, cafeterias, cafeterias mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, um, nursing homes, right. caterers, the food trucks you see driving around, the mobile trucks, mm -hmm. all of that, they're required to follow uh, public health regulations. Right. Um, and, and so they're, they're, they're inspected at minimum of twice a year, uh, in some cases more, depending on their inspection history. Right. Um, and these are unannounced inspections that are done. Um, but it's the same way with hotels, um, you know, septic system. Well, septic systems, typically we, uh, you know, you apply for that permit mm -hmm. um, and we help you with designing the system or laying out that system. Yeah. Um, there's still, you know, there's a lot of public health services in this county. There, there's a lot of municipal water, there's a lot of public sewer, but we still have areas that don't have access to that services. They still mm -hmm. have a private drinking well mm -hmm. and a septic system to dispose of their wastewater. Yeah. And so that's where we get involved to help with that. The other things that our environmental health team does is they investigate all animal bites in this county. Mm. That's a mandated service. Um, every animal bite is required to be reported to the health department. So we're we talking yeah. wild or domestic or any? Any animal bite, whether wild. it's wild or domestic. Okay. Um, we investigate a lot of animal bites people uh, you know <laughs> this we have a we're blessed with a lot of wildlife in this county mm -hmm. um, but we always recommend to to not handle wild animals um, mm -hmm. we unfortunately do have rabies in this area I mean it's in every county um, our particular variants is the raccoon rabies mm -hmm. um, as well as it's in bats mm -hmm. we found it in other animals um, but the reason that we investigate animal bites is we do a rabies assessment. Mm -hmm. um, rabies is 99% fatal, you know, 99.9% .9 fatal. Mm -hmm. Few people that that once they get the virus are not able to recover from it. Um, mm -hmm. And so we investigate the animal bite if it's a wild animal mm -hmm. and we can recover the animal, we'll have it tested for, for rabies. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's positive, there's a very safe treatment for rabies prevention. Um, if it's a domestic animal, uh, like a dog or a cat, and they've been exposed to a wild animal or they bite someone. It's really dependent upon if that if that domestic animal is vaccinated for rabies. Sure. Um, if they're vaccinated, we do a simple quarantine and just to monitor monitor the dog or cat. Mm -hmm. If they're not vaccinated and we can't recover the wild animal that they were exposed to, mm -hmm. um, there is options for longer term quarantine monitoring. But in a lot of cases, the animal has to be euthanized, which mm -hmm. is a sad situation. So. Yeah. My public health plug is if you've got a cat or dog, get them vaccinated for rabies. Keep them right. uh, up on their vaccination. 
um, it, because there is a chance they may be exposed to a wild animal. Yeah. Um, and, and we want to, the worst thing that I can ever tell someone is that you have to euth euthanize your dog or cat. I imagine you probably work in that scope pretty closely yeah. with our animal services. Absolutely. Well. The animal services is our partner. Um, they help us investigate these bites. Mm -hmm. um, they help us with if if we have to quarantine an animal, mm -hmm. a dog or cat, and the, the the animal owner doesn't have the proper facilities, and most most don't, mm -hmm. um, they will quarantine the animal at their facility. Um, right. There is a boarding fee for that, um, but they are they're a strong partner in that. They help yeah. us with um, when we have to send off specimens for testing. They help us with that, um, and so and they're right next door. Yeah, I was it, say our, yeah our main <laughs> health department location is on Eisenhower Drive, mm -hmm. um, and Animal Services is literally yeah, right next door. <laughs> I can hear the dogs barking um, <laughs> when I'm walking to my office. So, so these environmental health services are, 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 are mandated services, that meaning that the law requires us to provide these services. Mm -hmm. um, we also investigate complaints, environmental health related complaints, mm -hmm. um, and try to bring resolution to that. Um, we provide a lot of education. One of the goals of our environmental health program is to educate before we regulate. We, we like to educate a restaurant or a hotel or, right. you know, and try to work with them to help them comply with the regulations mm -hmm. before we have to bring the hammer down and regulate. Mm -hmm. The last thing we want to do is close a facility. It doesn't mm -hmm. help the business. It doesn't help us. You know, it actually makes it harder um, on everyone. And so we, 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 we take that very seriously mm -hmm. if we have to pull that trigger. Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, there are, if, if there's an imminent health hazard, we have to do that. Um, yeah. You know, what we typically do is work with the operator, the owner, to give them the option to close. You know, if we find something that just can't be resolved immediately, mm -hmm. that's a public health hazard, we'll usually work with them. There's very few times where we have to <laughs> use the law to, to, yeah. to, to force someone to close. Most of the time they work with us and, and, and choose to close on their own to fix or resolve the issue. And in those reports, you often see the corrective action yes. there yeah. on site That's right. for that first That's right. visit. Uh, and a lot of those things can be resolved yeah. that yeah. day. Uh, looking forward, what are some initiatives you hope to accomplish mm -hmm. that you want folks to know about? Well, you know, it's now that we are not in sort of this acute response mm -hmm. phase, you know, for three years, it was like everything was focused on the COVID response. Mm -hmm. Um, we were still offering other services, but we were very limited um, in what we could offer. We were not allowing many people in our lobby um, because of yeah. concern with COVID and quarantine and or, or uh, separation. Mm -hmm. And so we were very limited on what we could offer. And quite frankly, almost all of our staff were reassigned to some kind of COVID response. Now that that's not um, our primary focus now, um, one of the things that we have all we have done in Chatham as well as all the health departments is sort of refocus our energy into our public health services, the things that we have always offered. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, we've been able to sort of reestablish ourselves, I think, in the community um, as a place that people can go and they can get low cost but not low quality care. That's mm -hmm. the thing I want to highlight. You mm -hmm. know, we, our services, uh, our goal is to keep our services as low cost as possible. Um, some of our services that are that people need, um, you know, we have a sliding scale fee, income-based scale fee, basically, okay. and we can waive fees uh, for some folks if it's just an absolute necessary for them to receive that service. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, reestablishing sort of our public health footprint mm -hmm. is is definitely an initiative. Um, another initiative that um, that has was near and dear to my predecessor's heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and is certainly near and dear to my heart, is uh, if you're familiar with our, our Eisenhower site, mm -hmm. we have a large property. It's next to the soccer fields, yep. and there's a, a large sort of green space next to the health department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that green space is where the old health department sat. They, oh, they, so so okay. the health department in Chatham was built, the original health department mm -hmm. was built, I believe, in the late 40s, early 50s, and it operated mm -hmm. until 2013. And wow. in 2013, our new health department, they had started construction on it earlier, was completed, and we moved into the new facility that we're in. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the old facility was torn down and, and, and disposed of. Mm -hmm. So we have this giant area, and the goal has been to put a wellness park there. 
Um, that, that's our long-term goal, and we have a draw and a, par, a design for it, which we're in the process of updating. Um, and so we're, we're, you know, one of my long-term initiatives is to work with the county and the park services to establish some kind of wellness park there. Mm -hmm. um, we already have community gardens there, right, right. Um, and, and, and we're very proud of those gardens. We, we, our community garden is for our clients. Um, we grow vegetables year-round, and we provide free, free vegetables to our WIC clients, um, as well as other clients in the health department. We try not to let any vegetables go to waste. Mm -hmm. um, we've got our summer spring garden, our spring summer garden uh, actually going now. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, to me, the wellness park is a natural extension of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a long-term initiative um, that I hope to see to fruition one day. And uh, and happy that we're having talks about that now. Yeah. Um, and, and also, it, 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 it it's a community park. It's not a health department park. It's mm -hmm. uh, an, a park that when kids are waiting to play soccer, you know, they could go out and have activities available for them. But, but even on the weekends, you know, I think that it's, it's close to, you know, the linear, uh, the, 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 the new um, the Truman Linear Truman, Trail. Truman yeah. linear trail. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there to, to tap into that sort of w idea of wellness. Um, and and uh, to me, there's no better um, initiative as a, as a health department to mm. promote that. And so that is a long-term initiative. And then I think lastly for, for me and Chatham County Health Department is to establish services in West Chatham. Mm -hmm. um, all of our services, and I should have mentioned this in the middle, in, in the beginning, our main health department is on Eisenhower Drive. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a smaller site in Midtown. Mall, Mall, oh, no. In Midtown. Oh, yeah, on Drayton yeah, Street. On Drayton Street. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we have a, 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 a services primarily for HIV in downtown on Farm Street, okay. um, and but but all of those services are kind of in the core of Savannah. Mm -hmm. We if if you've kept up if you've been on Pooler Parkway in, in the last I live off Pooler Parkway. You know, in the last uh, <laughs> decade, you've seen the yeah. the massive amount of growth in yeah. West Chatham, and quite frankly, it's just going to continue with mm -hmm. Hyundai building the plant um, just up the road on I-16. I think West Chatham is just going to continue to explode in growth, mm -hmm. and. It, it's a long way for people to drive from Bloomingdale all the way to Eisenhower Drive or to, even to Midtown yeah. to, to, to receive some of our services. And so one of my goals is to establish a public health clinic in West Chatham. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I've been in talks with the county and um, hopefully we'll be able to bring that to fruition. That's a long-term project. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, do want to see and we, services available. Um, and we've sort of surveyed the community. We, we utilize Georgia Southern to help us do kind of an assessment of, of whether people would use the services. Mm -hmm. And the assessment they, that they provided was that, you know, the majority of our services would be utilized in West Chatham. And to that end, the surrounding counties as well, Effingham Absolutely. and Bryan. Absolutely. And we already provide services to surrounding counties, especially with our WIC program. We mm -hmm. see WIC clients in Chatham, but they live in other counties. Okay. So um, district-wide, so th they can yes. pop yes. in. Okay. Yes. Very Absolutely. Good. Well, if folks have any questions, want any information, what's the best way for them to, yeah. to reach out to you or find that information? So the best way is our website. Mm -hmm. um, we, and I think you're going to uh, show that on the screen. Our yep. website you stole my line. Um, is, uh, <laughs> it, it, it really provides uh, information on all of the services that we offer. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly they can call the health department. Uh, ask for me. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. happy to talk to anyone about our services. Mm -hmm. They can ask for our nurse director, our environmental health manager. Um, and one thing I did want to mention that, mm -hmm. that I, I failed to mention earlier because I was kind of focused on all these clinical and environmental health services is an extremely important program we offer is vital records. Hmm. We are the vital records office for the county. So any birth record, any death record is processed through Chatham County Health Department. Okay. Um, and that is a, every person yeah. at some point in their life has to have a birth or death, death record. Mm -hmm. um, and those are processed, the vital records office is in the Chatham County Health Department. Um, it's an extremely busy office. It's probably the busiest program in the health department, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and, and that is at the health department. And, um, and so if people don't know that, um, you can pick up a copy of your birth certificate. You can uh, get a death certificate there. Um, you can get a low THC oil card there if your doctor has prescribed you that. There's a process for that, but that's mm -hmm. where they're, they're actually distributed uh, to clients that, okay. that, that have been approved for a, a low THC oil card. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's an important service for the community, for the funeral industry, mm -hmm. um, and um, it's right there at the health department. And it's, been, it, it, it's not 
that service is not provided in every health department. Mm -hmm. In some counties, vital records may be in the probate court or it may be in a, but in, in some counties it's in the health department. And mm -hmm. in Chatham County, it has always been with the health department. Um, and we have uh, some of the oldest records in the state in our vault, wow. um, which is very exciting if you're into history. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, Dr. Austin, anything else that I missed that folks should know that you want to get out there? Well, the, the, I think probably the the most important thing is is that you know we are a prevention based service. Mm -hmm. um, we offer limited primary care for children. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a uh, we actually have the only certified pediatric nurse practitioner nurse practitioner in public health in Georgia in our health department. Hmm. Um, that is a specialty uh, degree that nurse practitioners get. Right. Uh, many nurse practitioners do the family nurse, nurse practitioner route, but we have one nurse practitioner who's our nurse manager actually, okay. who is a pediatric nurse practitioner. So we're able to offer pediatric primary care hmm. at our health department. That is very rare in health departments in Georgia to offer that. Hmm. We can do sports physicals, we can do well check visits for children. Hmm. Um, and so I did want to mention that that is a service that we offer. Um, and uh, you know, we our goal is to offer low cost um, and but high quality care, prevention based care, mm -hmm. and um, we're happy to serve the public. And um, and I'm happy to if anybody has any questions to to reach out and love to have a conversation with you. Well, that's one of the great things about our chats is we learn so much. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot having mm -hmm. been here in the community for eight and a half years that I wasn't mm -hmm. previously aware of. So yeah. thank you so yeah. much for coming in, sure. sharing that very important information with our viewers. So yeah, absolutely. Again, thank you for having me. Appreciate your time. All right. Yeah. Well, on behalf of Dr. Chris Rustin, I'm Sean Evans for The Chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Catch us next time.